I see those eyes fluttering. Are you awake, little human? Clearly so, given your reaction. Do not struggle against your bonds. They will not break. You'll just tire yourself out. I will remove your blindfold and gag, however, if you agree to be civil with me. Is that a nod? You'll be civil? I see. Let me remove these, then. I see surprise on your face, human. Not what you expected? We're in a safe house outside the city that I oversee for vampires. You're correct. This is no dungeon. But a comfortable living room. Even though you're bound to your chair, it must still be somewhat comfortable, yes? Your confusion is... understandable. I am different from the vampires you've met, after all. I'm smaller, about your size, almost completely resembling a human. Of course, I'm much more powerful and long-lived than the others in the city, but that's not important. Yes, I did. I called you human. Is it wrong to refer to one as they are? That is true. Many young vampires call humans prey or livestock as an insult. However, I call you human because you are human. It doesn't change the fact that you are my food source, but there's no reason to demean you for something you can't control. Hey, do not insult me. I did not challenge your humanity or intelligence. I simply said you were my food source. There is nothing wrong with the truth. You aren't dead because I don't want you dead. I don't need you dead. You may not believe me, but intelligent vampires at the very least balk at needless slaughter. I never said we don't intend or don't need to feed. However, millennia of life gives you time to overcome your instincts and realize things. Humans have fought humans, vampires have fought humans, and vampires have fought vampires. And for what? After thousands of years of perspective, a ten-year war becomes pointless. It makes you seek solutions. Solutions that seem crazy but aren't if you think about it. Have you or your race ever even considered coexistence? I can tell from the look on your face that you're blindsided by what I'm talking about. It's not an exaggeration, and I'm not the only one. Are the reasons really that hard to see? From your side, vampire feedings don't have to be lethal. If a vampire feeds regularly, the feeding is painless, quick, and barely noticeable. Some even find it pleasurable. If I was in your place, I'd prefer that to young, starving vampires driven solely by instinct draining people on the streets. It's about how much we take. That's what matters. The problem is that with the war between us, the less initiated are going for weeks or even months without a feeding. Imagine if you were to go a long time without food. You'd want to make up for lost time, no? What's worse is that a vampire, unlike a human, can't simply starve to death. Instead, they're slowly driven mad by their hunger until they're a psychotic mess.
Well, yes, we could theoretically stop them. But in addition to being starving, they're young. Their instincts are already overpowering them at that time in their lifespan, and the lack of food makes them go over the edge. Just like immature humans, immature vampires can be quite the handful. It's our nature as intelligent beings. I said we could theoretically stop them. It wouldn't be practical. While it's true that no young vampire could stand a chance against me or any of my millennia-old brethren, defeating them isn't the only issue. One thing we've successfully dissuaded them from is turning more humans. If we turn on them, that goes out the window. Add in that, if we eliminated our problem children, we'd be decimating our own ranks. Oh, don't get cocky now. <sighs> Would you like to know a secret? I know that we will eventually lose this fight. I know you have many questions, chiefly why I would admit such a thing to you. But it's simple. There's something I've always admired about your race. It's hard to explain. But in a few words, it's your ingenuity, your resourcefulness, your creativity, your innovation. In less than a thousand years, you've made more advancements than my race has and couldn't double the time. The fight is a stalemate now, sure. But what about a few years from now? I know what this looks like, human. An old man accepting inevitability. That's not why I want coexistence, however. It's true that coexistence gives the most favorable terms for vampires. However, it also gives the most favorable terms for humans. Perhaps. If humans don't wish to coexist, then rejecting the offer seems like the better deal on the surface. The problem is, despite my attempts to approach this peacefully, some of my age-old colleagues have plans to approach things in a more torch-and-burn fashion. No, they wouldn't win the war. That is impossible. However, they can make humanity lose just as badly. Hey, do not look at me that way. I know what this all seems like, but I am your ally. I am simply stating facts. I know that it's probably hard for you to trust me. I accept that. I can't empathize with your situation, after all. But there are things that make me unique from other vampires besides my power. Did you know that every human I've fed off has given me their consent? No, I haven't fed off of you. I'll even undo your binds and let you feel for bite marks if you like. All right. Let me get these off then. Just please don't do anything rash. Though there isn't any consequence of attacking me, you're unarmed, so it won't do much. As for running, uh, if you want to leave that badly, I can just show you the exit. Though I'd appreciate if you stayed just a little longer.
Yes, in fact, I was planning to let you go. I would even treat you to dinner before you go if you'd like. Think of it as thanks for hearing me out. No, I, of course I wouldn't serve you blood. <sighs> I forget sometimes that some people don't know we eat human food. In fact, we eat it quite often. Just think if you were to only eat one thing for a hundred years. Yes, yes, blood is still our main sustenance, but variety is the spice of life. Trust me, human. You want spice in a life that lasts thousands of years. The question is not what we will be having, but rather, what do you want to have? Since I reside here and many tastes come through, I have everything from the finest meats to fresh vegetables and everything in between. It's my treat. All right, I'll prepare that for you. As for right now, one last thing. Could you take my hand, human? Thank you. Allow me to properly introduce myself. I've gone by many names, but you can call me Michael. I once was a human, just as you are, and I still hold my humanity dear. But I'm different now and I can't ignore that. I'm doing what I can to make the world safe for both of our peoples. It's nice to meet you. Now, shall we go to the dining hall? I suppose it's only fair for you to think that. A stereotype of vampires is there hallowed halls, Victorian mansions and castles and such. And I assume you really haven't been to another vampire's residence. <laughs> Would you have preferred a hall with creepy statues eyeing us as we walk? <laughs> yeah, that's a little too on the nose, huh? No, I went with one of these modern designs some humans prefer. I liked how they looked, so I thought I'd get one built as an experiment. I've found I'm quite fond of houses like this. I... Human, get behind me. Do exactly as I tell you. Just do it. Before... Well, hello there, Michael. Lovely day we're having, hmm? Alex, I had specifically instructed that the safe house be empty of other vampires for the time being. What are you doing here? You'll have to forgive me, dear friend. You see, I happen to be in the area, and I just caught this delectable scent. Something I couldn't possibly mistake. Something I just had to check out. It is none of your concern. Now leave this place. Oh, but I think it is my concern. After all, I haven't come across a meal in days. And <laughs> we're in the dining hall after all. It seems you've already procured the meal. This human is not to be touched. Especially not by the likes of you, Alex. What has gotten into you, old man? You seem to have lost the plot. They are nothing but prey. Are those thousands of years blinding you to the present? Alexander, you're walking the line. I'd watch your tongue if you'd like to keep it. <laughs> Is that a threat? Old man, you couldn't hit me if you tried. That's a dangerous assumption. I'll tell you what's an assumption, all right. Uh, you son of a... Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. How disappointing.
I'll talk and nothing else. <sighs> Don't struggle, my little prey. This is how things should be. Don't let that old man deceive you. This is where you belong. Under my face. <laughs> ah, shit. I'll give you credit, Alexander. You caught me off guard. But you are thousands of years too young to mess with me. If you leave now, I might let you off with those two bones snapped. Now get out of my house. <laughs> oh, bastard. You've lost it. Fine, I'll leave. Harms will heal up, and I'll just go grab some humans off the city streets. You save one, I'll drain five more. And you, little human, pray we never cross paths, because I'll enjoy my time draining you. Slowly watching the terror in your eyes as your life force fades to nothing. <laughs> Ta ta. I'm terribly sorry this happened. I can see you're scared. It's okay. It's okay. If his fangs had touched your neck, I'd have killed him before he even drew a drop of blood. I understand. My offer for food still stands. Would you like something now? No, that's okay. No, that's okay. It's only natural that you would wish to be home more than anything. I will take you there. Yes, I will defend you the entire way. Rest assured, if anyone attempts to harm you, they won't live to regret it. Take my hand. Let's get you home. 